Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to be talking about some books that I am obsessed with. So these books are ones that I have read in the last couple of weeks, month, um, that I have just like not stopped thinking about and are like constantly wanting to talk about or like gush about or some of them I've read like so recently and I just am like obsessed and so I have a couple one two three four five I have six <laughs> that I'm gonna talk to you about and just basically like gush about some books that I'm just like utterly in love with most of these books are five stars there is um I think one that's 4.5 stars but I still love it so I'm gonna get right in because I talk a lot about books when I am really excited about them. So the first one that I'm gonna mention is Faith and the Dead and Devils by Catherine Moon. So when I originally did my mid-month wrap-up for November when I had read this book, because I think I read this book in the beginning of November, I think I gave it four stars or something or was like not as obsessed with it. But the more that I thought about it, I was like... I want to like go back and reread that even though I had just read that. I'm like desperately wanting more from those characters and I'm just like constantly thinking about them and I actually like bumped up my rating to five stars because I'm like dang that is such a good book. I love Catherine Moon's sweet verse in general. This is an omega verse romance with amazing spice by the way with a heroine named Faith who is a feral omega who then gets um She's been super traumatized. She was kidnapped by this organization which then sold her to a motorcycle club but then her the, the rival motorcycle club intercepts the shipment thinking it's going to be like guns and drugs and stuff and it's actually Faith. And so they take her um, and are like we can't leave her here, we have to take her with us. And one of the uh, alphas from the motorcycle club, who I think is actually the VP, he is like specialized at working with Omegas because back in the day he used to work for the Omega Center um, as a um, as an alpha for, an, uh, for Omegas during their heats. So he knows how to deal with Omegas, he has experience with it. And so he takes her and like builds a nest for her and like shelters her and everything and tries to get her to trust him but in the process he like entirely falls for her and they like grow this really really deep connection it's also why choose because a lot of um all of the sweet verse is why choose it's multiple partners and so uh faith ends up in a relationship with i think five members of this motorcycle club, four are alphas, and one is a beta. And I love the way that the president of the motorcycle club, like, seriously doesn't want an Omega there, and Faith very much is, like, he can't say no to her. He is hasn't been around a lot of Omegas, and so he doesn't understand the pull, and so when he meets Faith and he's around Faith, he's, like, can't help himself and he's like wow she's amazing once he gets to know her I love the way that the beta in the pack who like everyone in the motorcycle club really like looks down on for being a beta and that he himself looks down on for being a beta he's like it sucks that I'm a beta surrounded by alphas I am like not as worthy and faith like shuts that down so quick and she's like you are amazing and you are exactly the same worth as the alphas like your distinction does not make you any less worthy to be with me um any less manly also because he's like I'm like less of a man because I'm an alpha not an alpha and faith like shuts that down so quick she's such a strong heroine she's been through so much and so willing to fight and like stand up for herself and yet when the alphas are around her they are both at the same time wrapped around her finger and she's wrapped around theirs and it's so cute and I love it so so much and I think that one of the reasons why I'm so obsessed with this romance and so obsessed with Catherine Moon's sweet verse in general is because as much as I love Omega verse I really only love Catherine Moon's I haven't read any other Omegaverse romances that I feel as strongly about as Catherine Moon's Sweetverse. I think they are some of the best written Omegaverse books out there, 
if you have Omegaverse recommendations, especially Omegaverse Why Choose recommendations, because those are the ones that I like, if you have some that you think live up to Catherine Moon's Sweetverse, please let me know because I'm really on the hunt for them because I really love them. But I absolutely love Catherine Moon's Sweetverse and I'm so sad that this is like the last book in the series. I really hope that she writes more um, because I really, really, really want more. Then the next one that I have is one that if you've watched like any recommendation re recommendation video from me recently, you'll know how much I'm obsessed with this one because I recommended it like four times on my channel already. And that is Rewriting the Stars by Claire Kingsley. This is the last book in the Bailey Brothers series. And I am so mad. It took me so long to read this book. I am in love with it. Levi and Annika's relationship is utterly beautiful. I would recommend reading the rest of the series in order to get like the full picture of the town of Tillicum and of uh, Levi and Annika's relationship because Levi and Annika's relationship is really only in the last book but the all of the other overarching plotline of the like feud and of how the feud started runs through the other books in the series so I would unfortunately recommend reading the other books in the series in order to read this one but the other books in the series are really amazing also. But this book, this freaking book, is a rival family's romance and it's a single mother romance. The heroine Annika is a single mother and she and Levi have been having a secret text relationship for years they are not allowed to be in the same physical space. They're not allowed to talk to each other. They're not allowed to be friends or anything because Annika is a haven and Levi is a Bailey. And the Bailey and the havens have been feuding for generations and like aggressively feuding. Like this tiny town has like two grocery stores and two bars and two things. And like every single person in the town has to choose a side and there's no crossover of the town. So like if you choose a side you're sticking with that side and you can't associate with the people on the other side. And so it's like an aggressive feud. But Levi and Annika have formed this relationship since like high school. They started texting in high school and Levi and Annika end up being like I want to talk to you. I want to meet you. I want to do all this stuff. And so they decide that they want to be each other, want to be together so strongly that they are willing to breach the feud. And so they go against their families, they go against the town, they go against the history of the feud in order to be together and like stand up and be like, we want to be together and we are going to do it whether we have to leave the town or like not. Like we want to stay but if we have to we will choose our relationship over everything else and we will leave and it's so good the way that the baileys and the havens have to like work together and like um get along with each other and levi and annika's relationship is so swoon worthy and adorable levi worships the ground that Annika walks on. He is so 100% all in on her and also her son. He loves that her son like he's his own and they're so so cute. I cannot wait for the Haven Brothers series because Claire's announced that she's gonna make Haven Brothers books and I am just so excited about it. The next book that I have is another one that I read in November and that is Real by Kennedy Ryan. This book this freaking book. I buddy read with Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings and I am so so grateful that Rachel asked me to do this buddy read and that we actually went through with it because I needed somebody to push me. For Kennedy Ryan's books I need to buddy read them. I think that that's, that's going to be my best bet going forward with all Kennedy Ryan books is that I'm just going to need to buddy read them because it forces me to actually sit down and read them. Because her books are amazing but I have this like fear of them that I'm going to get so emotional with them and I am like scared of my own emotions basically. And I did. I did get so emotional reading real especially in the last like 15 chapters. I cried in this book. I never cry in books. I've cried in like four books in my entire life and I cried in this book and it is so much. So this book is a forbidden romance between a 
a director and an actress in the movie um, that he's directing and it is a black love romance and the movie that they're making is a movie about a woman named Desi Blue who doesn't exist who is a representation of basically all of the black artists and performers from the Harlem Renaissance who are forgotten, who are not talked about in history, whose historical impact were not properly recorded or appreciated by the general public. And so it is a amazing, amazing romance. Parts of it read like historical fiction in like the most beautiful way where you're getting this like amazing history element of it that is just like not something that we've talked about or learned about at least that I haven't and I know that Rachel said that she hasn't either and so that part of it was just like utterly stunning the writing Kennedy Ryan's writing is everything it is everything the amount that I highlighted and underlined and annotated in this freaking book let me get my physical copy actually so I listened to the audiobook and then followed along with the paperback but there were parts of it, especially towards the end, where I was literally highlighting like full fucking paragraphs. There was like one like page where I swear I highlighted like the whole page. <laughs> like here's another one where it's like full paragraph highlights. Um, but I was so invested in and into this book I even wrote in the margins and I'm not talking just like a couple of words I'm talking there was like one page where there was like an here I found it actually where there was like an empty space on the page next to it and I wrote full wrote in the book like paragraphs of writing of my thoughts into this and everything and it was just utterly amazing and swoony the relationship was amazing and then it also on top of all of that had chronic illness representation and like severe chronic illness representation. Neva the heroine has lupus and struggles so hard with it and I do not have anything close to the um impact of lupus um but I do struggle with my own chronic illness and it's a day-to-day -day struggle with it and so I understood some of the things that Neva was talking about with her own struggles with il chronic illness and with the desperation that she felt with the sadness and just like she was so, it was, it was so impactful for my own life for just, I loved it. I loved it so, so, so much. And I'm going to give it to like every single person that I can in order to get them to read it. I really want my mom to read it. She is another person who um, struggles with chronic illness and even to a uh, stronger extent than I do. And so I really think that she would appreciate this romance. It is amazing. I love it so much. It's made me want to like go and read some of Kennedy Ryan's other books. But again, like I'm still afraid. Um, I'm like really afraid. <laughs> Um, but I know that her writing is just amazing and beautiful. If you have the chance to buddy read this, if you have the chance to listen to the audiobook, please take it, please do it, because it is amazing. Another book that I have is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This book is nowhere near as impactful, as emotional, as stunning writing as real, but I loved this book and it was just fun. I had a fun time reading this book and it is what I needed when I was reading it. I have anxiety and I have um, depression and I just very much needed something enjoyable. And this book was exactly what I needed. It was so fun. It was so just easy and I had a great time with it and I actually gave it five stars. I loved it and it is a small town romance where a heroine named Naomi comes and to the town. She's looking for her sister. Her sister's name is Tina and Tina is like not a great person. She doesn't make good decisions. She's always been known as like the bad twin. They're identical and Naomi has had to be the good twin for her entire life but she gets to the town. Her twin sister steals her car 
steals a bunch of her stuff, and then leaves the 11 year old daughter that Naomi didn't know she had with Naomi. And so Naomi ends up having to take custody of the 11 year old niece that she didn't know existed and stay in the town and find a way to make money and a place to live while also arguing, um, uh, running into constantly this guy named Knox who is like the grumpy guy in town and she ends up working at his bar. She ends up living next door to him and all this stuff and they end up having a romance. He is a grumpy hero. I love a grumpy hero and he was just so good. He was such a good hero. I really really liked him and the heroine was just fun and I related to her a lot just for like the re reality of her life of just like the way that she dealt with her problems was just very relatable to me and it was just a fun romance and I had a great time with it. Another one that I had just a great time with was Smash and Grab by Mazmatics. This book, I didn't know anything about this book. Honestly, I had zero idea what was going, what, what, what this was about going into it. All I knew was that it was MM. That was the only thing I had. I remember Jessen from Jessen Reads Romance talking about this book like ages ago and it was like put on my radar then but it was never like a priority because again I didn't know what it was about. But I recently canceled my Scribd account and I had like a couple of days left to read on Scribd in, before the um subscription was going to expire and so I was like looking through Scrib to find books that I could read on there and I came across this book again and I was like smash and grab by Mathematics. That's that book that Jessen was talking about um back in the day. This was like literally like two years ago that I saw Jessen talk about this um or a year ago something. It was a long time ago but I decided to read it it's a dinosaur shifter romance. Like what? How did I not know this was a thing? It's dinosaur shifters. It's MM. It's hilarious. The books are so short and quick and easy to read. It's adventure and it was just so fun. It was so fun. So these group of dinosaur shifters um they are the group that they follow is called relic and they are a group of dinosaur shifters that's job is to go around and collect dinosaur artifacts in order to return them to the rightful owner as in the country where they're supposed to be or the museums that they're supposed to be at in order to give humanity the proper building blocks and tools to learn about how life came from about dinosaurs about history and basically they take them from collectors or from other people who just want to display them or have them or destroy them and give them to museums and people who want to preserve them and study them and learn about them. And so in the first book Smash and Grab which is this one the book three is I think is actually my favorite it's called King and Queen but uh the first three books amazing. I gave the first book four and a half stars, the second book four stars, the third book five stars, and the last book is my least favorite. Um, I think I gave it three and a half stars, but the first three books, amazing. Even though the last book was my least favorite, it was still fun and enjoyable. Um, but these one, this one specifically is about a hero named Dalton who's just utterly hilarious and silly and fun, and he's a dinosaur shifter, and I want to be his best friend. Um, and he breaks into a museum at the same time that the museum is being broken into by like other evil people who are trying to steal this fossil and Dalton is like I gotta steal it before them and while they're stealing it he runs across this paleontologist who works at the museum who was caught up in the other people who are trying to steal it and he's like I gotta rescue him and take the fossil and so he does that and then they have to go on the run back to where Dalton's like headquarters is where the relic headquarters are but they have to like escape from these other people who are following them trying to get the fossil and so they have to like stay at a safe house for a while it's an only one bed situation it's forced proximity because they're in the car on the road trip and it's just so fun the uh paleontologist hero is like very buttoned up and stuffy and he's like freaking out the entire time and Dalton is so go with the flow so hilarious he has like a pink mohawk that he has and he is just 
so funny and I loved him and he gave me like such ADHD vibes if you've ever read the Bailey brothers um not the ba if you've ever read the Miles brothers by Claire Kingsley he really gave me um uh reckless miles vibes whatever his name is cooper miles vibes where he's like very adhd and just like constantly moving around and can't sit still and all that stuff where he's just like got a lot on his mind and you're like he's like saying something and you're like how did we get here we were just at this conversation over here but it's hilarious i freaking loved it and i just had such a good time with it and i am so happy i literally marathoned the entire series and it was so fun it was so fun so unfortunately my camera battery is flashing so i'm actually not going to do the last book that i had um on here i'll make another video um in a bit uh when i have more to talk about and i'll just include that one in that video but those are the ones that i'm going to talk about in this video they are ones that i'm just like utterly obsessed with and you should go read because they're great romances but that's going to be it for this video, so please like it if you liked it, and subscribe so you can see more content from me. But other than that, I hope you have a great day. Bye!